Hello, I'm Dr. Brian Fraser, and in this video I'm going to show how to use Git integration into Android Studio, which is based on IntelliJ, so this video should apply to both. Uh, to begin with, I need a project to start with. I'm going to show how to take a project and put it into a brand new GitLab repo, and then um, kind of do some basic check-in of that code. So let's start a new project here. I'm just going to whip through the uh, sample here. My application's fine. We'll just go through all the defaults get myself an, a, a standard uh, Android application to work with. Uh, again, if you're using IntelliJ, um, the same process should apply. Just get a project up and running, and then uh, the sort of menu interface and the Git interface specifically uh, should be very similar. OK, so uh, get rid of these. Um, I'll just show you here what I've got. I now have my basic um, project. On the left, I can bring this up, and it'll show me I've got all my standard files. And I could go ahead and run this if I wanted to and show that it actually is a working Android project. But what I really want to do is I want to take all my files. Let's just kind of come to the main one here, and I'll put in a comment just to make it obvious, you know. Uh, super code goes here. And I've changed a bunch of other files, imagine, and so forth. Now I wish to put it into a, uh, a GitLab uh, repo. So the first thing I might want to do is enable uh, GitLab integration. So I have to go to the version control system menu on the top. And I'm going to say en enable version control integration. I can pick which system I want. I'm going to say Git here and then OK. And it's now processing. Um, if you find that this did not work, you'll probably then need to go and actually install Git. I'm under Windows, uh, so you need to install Git for Windows, which I can show you here. So Git for Windows, you can download uh, whichever version you want, probably the 64-bit now. Um, if you're under Linux, you've probably got it already, or you can like apt-get Git. Once that's installed, then you can um, basically tell Intelli or IntelliJ and Android Studio, where to find it. Um, so it's asking me, do you want to add it? Yes, I'll add my files to the uh, repo there. OK, so if you have not, if you had a, some sort of issue with getting the um, integration, I can tell you that it's, I, can, I know that it's working because down here on the bottom, I can click on version control and it will give me this window here. Uh, if I don't have this along the bottom, I can mouse over this bottom one and select it like that. If this did not come up, go to um, File, Settings, and then under Version Control, I want to select Git. And then at the top, you probably have to set the path to uh, where to find git.exe, which is probably c colon slash program files slash git slash uh, command. OK. Um, so now I've got this project. I want to check it into a GitLab repo. I need to build said GitLab repo, so I need to create it. Um, so I've created an account on GitLab.com. Um, if you're through an institution like a university, they may have a local GitLab uh, server that you would want to otherwise check, work on. So now that I'm here, I don't have any projects yet. I'm going to scroll down and select like New Project. I give it some sort of name. So we'll just say uh, Initial uh, Test for Video. I can go through and select all the options for it, but I fundamentally, I just want a private project. Click Create. So now it's telling me a few things here. Uh, it created the project. That's great. It's giving me a warning here. You won't be able to push or pull via SSH until I add an SSH key. I could go ahead and just use HTTPS here. So here's the URL to access this via uh, HTTPS. In which case, every time I access it, I'd have to put in my username and password, or in this case, let Windows store that for me. And in general, having different programs store your username and password can be a bad idea. Uh, plus, if you don't trust, for example, the program you're typing it into, you've got another issue. So we're going to switch over to using SSH. Now, in order for this to work, I have to, as it says here, add an SSH key. I could just click on this, and it would take me there. Uh, but I'm going to show you how to access this add an SSH key and let, if you don't happen to have this pop up. Uh, so I want to click the drop down here in the top right. And then I'm going to say Profile Settings. And across the top, I've got a bunch of things here. And I want to say an SSH key. So what this is, an SSH key is sort of a secret key. I've got the private part, there'll be a public part, and I'm going to give the public part to 
the GitLab server. And that way it can validate that when I communicate with it, uh, who I actually am. So I need to put it in here. Uh, now I need to generate one. There's a few ways to do that. The easiest way is through Windows. I'm going to run the GitLab or Git UI. So I'm going to type Git. I want the Git GUI. That comes standard with uh, Git for Windows. Here I can go to Help, and I can go Show SSH Key, of which I haven't got one. <laughs> but I can click Generate, and it will now give me a new one. I could type in a passphrase if I wanted to. I don't need a passphrase here. And so here is my passphrase. Or, pardon me, my uh, the public portion of my SSH key. Uh, the actual details in the SSH key are stored in a folder, I believe, called um, I can't remember the name. Anyway, it's in your home folder or your uh, user folder um, under Windows. So I'm going to say copy to clipboard. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to paste it in. So here's the SSH key that has been stored. Let me just validate that worked OK. Yeah, it looks approximately right. And then I'm going to give it a name. Uh, I'm going to give it something meaningful. So maybe something like uh, home. Uh, this is I'm actually doing this through a VM. So through home, Windows, VM. And that way I know which machine it's on. And I'm going to add the key, because each machine I'm on is going to have a different SSH key. And now later, what I could do is if I decided, well, if I got lost this machine or it was no longer using it, I can remove the key, and it will no longer have access. So I don't have to manage individual passwords. OK, so now I've basically set up this sort of secret handshake. Let's go back to my project. So I'm going to go back to here, under Projects. Um, I will only have to do that setup, incidentally, once for my GitLab account on that GitLab server. Uh, now every time I try to connect through this current machine, it will use that same SSH key. So now I've got rid of that warning at the top, I can now use this SSH. So I'm going to select all that. I'm going to need this a little later on. So let's go back into Android Studio or IntelliJ. And what I want to do is I want to commit all of my files. At the moment, down here in the version control window, it's only added the one file here. But I want to actually add a whole bunch of files. And so I'm going to click here on the unversioned files. Let me just expand that. There are some things like the git ignore files tells git what files not to check in, um, all of these other ones, some resources, so on and so forth. And somewhere in here, we'll actually find my real code that I was just looking at, so my Java code. So where is it now? Activity, here it is. This one is the code I was just looking at. But effectively, I want to put them all in. So I'm going to go from the top to the bottom, selecting them all. I'm going to right click, and I'm going to say Add to Version Control System. And we'll now see that all of the unversioned ones are now stuffed here in the default, which is ready to be committed. So the next thing I need to do is I need to actually push this up to my uh, GitLab server. And as I do so, I'm going to check it into my local GitLab, or my local, rather, Git. Uh, repo. So I'm going to say I want to commit changes. Um, the easy way to do this is simply say I want to take them all. So I'm going to put check marks here for give me everything. That should be all 31 fi or 33 files for me at the moment. And I'll put some message in, something like uh, initial commit is good and popular. Now I could just commit locally. I actually want to commit and push to my remote repo. So I'm going to do a commit push. I haven't yet set up the remote repo, but that's OK. We can do that in just a moment. Before committing, it's always going to perform a code analysis and give me some feedback on maybe some things I want to change and correct. I could click Review here, and let's just do that for fun. It will then stop committing. It'll go here and show me the code analysis and give me some kind of tips on things. And as it turns out, all of these ones are not ones I want to fix at the moment. So I have to go back through that process. I'm going to go into Version Control. All of them are still ready to commit. I'm going to say Commit Changes. Go back up here, reselect all of the files, and go commit push. This time I'm just committing. Now this is the first time I've actually tried to do a, anything with Git on this machine, and so it's going to ask me for my name and my email address. This is something that Git needs in order to track who it was that put the data in. You want to give us some meaningful name and a meaningful email address uh, that applies uh, to you. So I'll say, you know, Brian at somewhere.com. You probably want to put in something meaningful to who you are. Set globally, sounds good. Set and commit. Now it can't actually do the push yet because it doesn't have a remote to push to. So I'll click here, define remote.
and I need to give it the URL. Well, that URL is what we pulled from here in my GitLab repository. So I'm going to copy that, go back into uh, Android Studio, and I'm going to paste. And here we see it starts with git at, so this is using SSH, so I must have configured that SSH key, which we did. So I'm going to say OK. Sounds good. It's going to validate the uh, authenticity of who it is I'm talking to. And now it's ready to push. So it says these are the files that are going to go up if I click push. Looks good. I'm going to push it up. You can see at the bottom it is pushing. And we're done. So let's see that what actually happened. This repository was empty. If I hit F5, reload it, now we can see that it's got this initial commit. So now let's go about making another change and pushing it up. So over time you can do some other things like you know, int or 4 int i equals 0, i less than 10, i plus plus, and do something cool here. Yeah, we say we check that, it works fine. We would of course compile it and test it first, but for this demo we don't need to. I can click on commit oop, yeah, commit changes. I will select all the files that have changed, and now we can say something like added for loop or something much more meaningful when we've done it. At the bottom I'm going to commit and push to push up to the remote server as well. Don't need to review. I'm going to push. And it's again pushing. Let's check at the bottom here, and we should now have a couple of uh, commits. If I look at number of commits, there should be two, and here they are. One thing that will then generally happen is, at least in the simple case, is somebody will edit some files and push it up if you're working on a project, and we can simulate that by just going through here, and I'm going to make a change online, and then we'll pull the change down to my local machine. So here it is, I'm online, I'm going to click on Edit through GitLab, and I'll put in here, uh, someone else fixes all my bugs, which is great. Uh, I then need to scroll down, put in some sort of commit message like bugs fixed, commit to master. So this is kind of faking it that somebody else has done some work, and through the similar process we just saw, push the changes up. Now what I need to do is I need to pull those changes down. So through I'm going to go to version control, update project. The defaults are okay for this. We wait, and then here we are. We have it's pulled down the changes for us. Okay, so that's all I wanted to talk about here. We saw how to set up the repo, uh, both through GitLab and then the SSH key, create the project and push it up, push some new changes from our end, and pull down changes uh, from the remote work. Uh, see a later video that's going to be coming soon on how to do some more uh, intelligent merging through IntelliJ. Thank you for watching.